What is the shot string? That is a question that has been talked about, debated, researched by some of the greatest minds in shotgunning for over a hundred years. I've wondered it myself in most of my adult life. There's only been a few photographs and some blurry black and white footage that we can look at and not much you can learn from that. But that all ends today because for the first time anywhere, you're gonna see slow-mo, high quality footage of the shot string. You're gonna see it right here with me today. I'm Joel Strickland and this is Surviving Duck Season. We are right here at the muzzle. We're getting ready to take our very first shot. A $300,000 camera. Sign the hole. Whoa, look at that. That is sick. So I'm trying to show the difference between three and three and a half for the same load. Sign the hole. What the heck? I'm very, very excited about this. Where am I? And how did I get here? You're in your thinking spot. You know, the place where you daydream and contemplate. Oh yeah. As hunters, we daydream a lot about hunting. Remembering great moments and anticipating future hunts. We also contemplate how things work, why things happen. And what if we tried this? One of those things has been on the minds of many great inventors, shooting professionals, and average shotgunners has been the shot string. What's a shot string? On our last video, we talked about patterning your shotgun, the combination of the shotgun, the ammunition, and the choke tube at whatever distance you're gonna be shooting at. And on target, we see a round, mostly round representation of the trigger pull. But that doesn't tell the entire story. What we're gonna to do today is see the rest of the story, not just the flat 2D version, but the 3D version of the shot string, which means from the barrel to the target in that nanosecond of the trigger pull. While I've been fascinated with the subject for three decades, the shot string has been researched by many for over 100 years. It was important enough for the legendary John Olin of Winchester to develop shells with a shorter shot string using copper plated hard lead and progressive burning powder. Bob Brister tackles the shot string topic in his 1976 book, Shotgunning, The Art and the Science. It's a fantastic book that all shotgun enthusiasts should read. There's a lot of good information there, although much of it is outdated. In the book, Brister talks a lot about the shot string and shares a remarkable story of how he was able to demonstrate the shot string. He took the family station wagon and attached a trailer to the back of it with a long paper that would be a target for Bob to shoot at as his wife sped by at 40 miles an hour. I'm not making this up. And so from that, he determined what the shot string was for the different loads that he was shooting. Pretty cool stuff. Over the years, I've read many different articles about the shot string with differing theories. Some say that a long shot string is bad and causes you to not have enough pellets on target. A duck would just fly through your shot string and you'd only hit him with a few pellets. But a short shot string means that more of the pellets would be able to hit the duck because they're compressed into a smaller area. Some people claim that a longer shot string actually helps by giving you more of an opportunity to hit the bird. If you lead the bird enough, I guess. Then there are some who've even claimed that while there is a shot string, it just doesn't matter. When I started working on this series a couple of years ago, this all came back up in my mind. 
I thought I should do some of my own research. There's an awful lot of people making claims about the shot string, even today, but very few have verified their claims with actual evidence. So my first task in this endeavor was to figure out how to demonstrate the shot string. Being in film and television production, I looked into renting a high-speed video camera used for slow-mo. But two years ago, the technology wasn't there to shoot over 100,000 frames a second at a decent resolution. So I put on my thinking cap. How could I demonstrate the shot string? My wife isn't going to drive her SUV down the road for me to shoot at. Plus, that's already been done. What can I do? I've got it. I decided to get some ballistics gel and propel it into the air and shoot it. Then we could see how many pellets would be captured in the gel. The key would be to use gel that was cut closer to the size of a duck. A six inch cube would work perfectly. I called my buddy Steve Gould of Target Focus Life He's a professional shooter and was very excited to participate in my crazy plan. This is so much more dynamic than just looking at a piece of paper. That's helpful. Paper is helpful and should be done, but this is going to be really cool. I've, I've never played with anything like this before. We figured out that we didn't want the gel to get dirty and clear was just a little hard to see. So we put it into a high and dry waiter bag. All right, we have the Federal Speed Shock Browning Wicked Blend. Heavy shot, heavy metal, Apex ammunition, TSS. We shot a dozen different loads and several chokes, Pull. lobbing the ballistics gel at a right angle to Steve at 30 yards away. It was an interesting test that we spent a lot of time and effort on, but the results were not exactly conclusive. We're trying to demonstrate with this is what part of the shot string is actually hitting a bird as it's flying through the air. And it might be different every time you pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, the wind is gonna have something to do with that at times. If your pattern is say this big, are you hitting it center punch? Are you hitting it on the side? Yeah. You know, so right. there's a lot of that that we don't know. And you would have to shoot hundreds of them with the same shots over and over again before you could really get an average. Absolutely, but this was super interesting yeah. just to see the different results. Our findings were that we captured about the same amount of pellets in the flying gel as we got in a gel block that was stationary. Does that mean that the shot string doesn't matter? Not necessarily. We honestly don't know what it means. Just more questions. How else can we see the shot string? It's too bad there isn't a camera that has the technology to see what we want to see. Or is there? I was familiar with the camera brand Phantom. They've been the pioneers in high-speed cameras. So I reached out to them, asking if they had any cameras in development that soon would be capable of shooting ammunition that flies at 1,500 feet a second. The company representative told me, in fact, that they had a brand new camera that they just released, and it would both shoot at the right speed and at a really good resolution that we can see exactly what we're looking for. There's only a few of them in North America, and they are available to rent. When he told me the price to rent it, I said, oh no, I don't want to buy the camera, I just want to rent it. He laughed and said, oh, well, if you were going to buy one, it'd cost you over $300,000. <laughs> Eight months later, I rented the camera with the intent of learning and making history. This is the Phantom 7510. This camera will show us what happens between the trigger pull and the target. What happens to those pellets in between? We're going to be shooting between 100 and 200,000 frames a second. Uh, many of you may not know what that means, but that means we can shoot super duper slow. And it's a technology that I've been waiting for to be able to show you the shot string. My buddy Andy Dean, who is a really great friend of mine, he and I have been working in production practically our whole lives off and on together. He's got lots of experience using a Phantom. And so I called him and said, hey man, why don't you come and help me out with this project? And so it's like bringing the band together again. I'm super excited and I know we're gonna bring some awesome stuff for everybody to learn from. Shooting with the Fandom was a huge challenge. 
it requires tons of light. We needed 100% full sun for this thing to work for multiple consecutive days, which is a challenge anywhere. The week of our shoot, the Lord bless us with beautiful sunny skies. We determined that a field of view of about eight feet would give us the best opportunity to see as much pellet travel as possible, considering the camera resolution and size of the pellets. We are right here at the muzzle. We're getting ready to take our very first shot. Uh, we're gonna be looking at what happens when we pull the trigger and the first eight feet coming out of the barrel with the pellets. We would be shooting at multiple distances across the 40 yard span. Okay, everybody, we ready? Everybody ready? It's gonna be great. Okay, here we go. Fire in the hole. The shot heard round the world. All right, let's go look at it. Okay, so we have a makeshift viewing room here in this shop which is on location where we're shooting all of the slow-mo stuff this week and we are just about to watch the very first shot that we made a couple minutes ago i'm super excited about it let's see what we got oh wow that is crazy so this is federal number twos Look at the wad just peeling off of that sucker. That is nuts. These white lines are one foot markers in between every one of those. So just so you know what you're looking at. So we shot a bunch of different loads at the muzzle with different backgrounds and stuck with a factory modified for the first several shots. Okay, this is Fiocchi, three inch number two. Look at the column, it's like perfect. 180,000 frames a second. This is so cool. All right, here's the next one. Okay, this is the Boss Shorty, which is the two and three quarter number five. You can see the copper plating on it. Now, right away, I'm already noticing that the shot string on the bismuth is longer than the steel shot. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven feet. It's almost a foot long. So it's considerably different than the steel shot. Okay, this is heavy metal which is steel shot and heavy shot. Now the brown stuff that you see on there, that is flax seed that they use in, in the cartridge. You can see the pellets are already separating. The steel is in the front and the tungsten alloy pellets are in the back. Okay, this is Winchester Expert number twos. This is fascinating stuff. I mean, what I'm noticing that I really wasn't expecting is the uniformity and the orderly flight of these pellets. I was expecting them to be like hitting each other or bouncing around or something like that. And it's not at all like that. This is the Apex TSS. This is number, number nines and you can see the multiple pieces of the wad. There's two pieces of the wad, and then there's this little spacer which is made out of cork, and then here's the actual pellets. The TSS is very tightly packed, and it's right at one, two, three, four, five, seven feet. It's still very tightly packed, okay? So we've moved the shooting position to 40 yards from the target. The camera, the slow-mo camera is at the target. So it's gonna see like the last eight feet of the shot string as the shot hits the target. I'm so excited. I'm telling you, this is, this is the moment that I have been waiting for, for sure for the last year as we've been in preparation for this, 
this uh this shoot today but then also really for a large part of my life i'd say since i was a kid you know i was wondering about the shot string and read stuff about it and today we're going to see it we're going to be the first people in history to ever really see what the shot string does in real live color motion Okay, I'm gonna quit yapping. Let's get a let's get a shot. We're gonna start off with a number two steel shot. This is the Winchester Expert, very common steel load, and we're going to shoot it and see what we get. Cool stuff, guys. Cool stuff. All right, y'all ready? Ready, Andy? Ready. Fire in the hole. All right, I'm ready to see what this looks like. Let's do it. So we are gonna check out the very first shot that we did at 40 yards, uh, the Winchester number two expert. Now this is about eight feet. The target is actually just, just out of camera range. And so what we're gonna be looking at is the last like eight or nine feet of the shot string. So let's take a look at it. Okay. First pellets, yeah, that is cool. Not all of the pellets are traveling at the same rate. That's interesting. Okay, let's back it up and look at it one more time. I wanna take a look and see, I wanna count the shot string. Now we can't see the entire length, it's more than, you know, seven or eight feet. But what we can do is we can use some redneck math <laughs> using the one foot markers and we can pause and count. And so let's do that. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay. So when this gets to the very end, we're gonna pause it. Ready and now. So that's the first freeze point. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feet. All right. And then we're gonna play it. We're going to follow this all the way to the end. Ready and now. Okay, so we're going to count backwards from there, seven feet, then this will be eight feet, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It, there, I do see some pellets over here on the left, but it looks like the majority of the pellets kind of end right in here. Okay, so that would be like 11, between 11 and 12 feet. Let's go ahead and play it for just a second. Yeah, there's just like a couple of stragglers. So, I mean, we're not gonna be super technical with this, uh, at least just for the first one. We're gonna be looking at lots and lots of shot strings over the next week. And then probably when we get done shooting this, I'm gonna be analyzing stuff. But this is a pretty good guesstimate to say that that shot string was 11, maybe 11, 11 and a half, 12 feet, somewhere in there. We're taking the majority of the pellets that are in the shot and wherever the majority of them are, like say 80, 90% of them, that's what we're gonna call is the shot string for that particular load. All right, cool. Let's go shoot some more. All right, so now I've got a lead two and three quarter inch number four. Uh, it's magnum hard lead. So we're gonna see what that looks like. Kind of give us a baseline. Two and three quarter number four. And let's freeze it now. Okay, first pellet hit right there. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going. Like, that's like the end of it. Here's a few pellets here, here's a pellet here, here's a pellet, a few pellets. I mean, you could, you could say it's 15 feet, but really it's more like the majority of it happens in like 11 feet. So, yeah, that's interesting. I was kind of expecting it to be maybe a little bit longer than that, but it's, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, all right. I've got some Boss. This is gonna be, this is their Shorty, which is a two and three quarter inch number five. Like a squadron of starfighters attacking the mothership. Isn't that cool looking? That is a dead duck just destroyed it.
boss shorty. Here we go. We're going to freeze it right when the first pellet hits the duck and bam. Okay. First one hit right there. And let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let her rip. And ready now. Good. Yep. Hit him right in the eye. <laughs> okay. Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and let her go. Okay, and now, good. So 15, 16, 17, 18, I mean, really somewhere in here is kind of the majority. It, the rest of this is just kind of stringing out. So I don't know. I mean, we're looking at 16, 17 feet maybe. Interesting. So, so far we have lead that's at about 11 feet, steel shot, which is at about 11 feet. The boss bismuth that we've tried, that is uh, copper plated, is at about 16 feet. So, pretty interesting. Apex number nines, three inch. 1,500 feet a second. Man, it's a whole bunch of little bitty pellets. Pretty cool. All right, let's count the string. Okay. We're going to freeze it in just a second. And now. Good. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going. That's it. I mean... There's like one, la wait for me, wait for me. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. So that is definitely the shortest um, that we've seen is eight feet. All right, federal, ounce and a quarter, 1,450 feet a second. Ready, Andy? Yep. All right, fire in the hole. couple of overachievers out front and pause. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, go. Wow. I mean, that's about what it is. Literally the last, there's three pellets past eight feet. So that's pretty impressive. So we've been out this afternoon with several different types of ammo shooting at several different distances from the muzzle to the target, just kind of getting an idea of what things look like at certain points as they travel across the 40 yard span. And so we're going to take a look at this one here. Go ahead and hit the play. Uh, this is boss uh, number, this is a 3.5 boss and I'm actually shooting it out of a Muller UFO choke, which is a really long range, almost like a turkey choke type of deal. I just wanted to kind of see what it looked like. So we can see that that's pretty cool looking, isn't it? All right, so then this is the next distance. It's like six to 10 feet. And then this is at 25 to 30 feet or so. Just a little bit further. There's the wad still flying through. This is 20 yards. So let's, let's back this all up and just take a look now. That is, I can just watch that stuff all day. That is so cool. All right, so this again is the Voss 3.5 with a Muller UFO, long range choke. So this is at the muzzle. This is like four or five feet. Now the next shot is actually six feet. So watch that. Check that out. Isn't that sweet? And now this one is at 25 feet. That's a cool shot right there. Okay, the next one is 15 yards. I've just kind of sped it up a little bit, but that'll give you the idea. Quite a bit more shot stringing going on. One thing that I've read 
Um, as far as research goes, a lot of the guys are talking about stringing is affected by the, uh, the choke. If you use like a wide choke, like a skeet, improved cylinder, that sort of thing, you're gonna have a shorter shot string versus using a tighter constricting choke, like a full choke or whatever. And so that may be what we're seeing here with this UFO choke, because I have shot some modified that I felt like that the shot string was a little bit shorter. Again, we don't know if the shot string matters or not. We're just learning for the very first, you know, few hours of our research, but this is really cool stuff. We're gonna do the same thing with the number two Fiocchi load. It's a three inch um, ounce and an eighth. These pellets are just like in a little cone coming out of there. That is really cool. All right, so here they are at six feet. Let's back that up. I want to look at that again. Here they come and bam. Okay. That's like a foot. That's a little bit past that, but it's a little bit there. So we're going to call that a foot. you got a foot shot string at six feet, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet. So that's three yards. At three yards, you have a one foot shot string with this particular load. Okay. Play it. Okay. And let's do the same thing again. Bam. Okay. So with this one, this is at, let me, let me look at my notes, make sure I get it right. Uh, so this is at 25 feet. So 25, 26, 27, 28. So it's just under 30, uh, 10 yards. Okay. So we've got a one foot, two foot ish shot string. These little extra pellets, I'm not going to you know, necessarily call that the, the shot string. It's just a little extra few pellets on the end. Let's go ahead and play that on out. Oh, got one more pellet coming at the, bringing up the rear. All right, that's pretty cool with that wide flying through there. This is at 40 yards, the very end. And stop. Man, one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep going. Uh-uh. You gotta be kidding me. That's six feet. Play that one again. I wanna make sure I didn't miss something. That's it. That's all there is. That's a six foot shot string on steel shot. What the heck? That was with a modified choke, just a factory modified. We're gonna have to shoot that one a few more times to see what we come up with, because that's that's blowing my mind right there. I still have a lot more questions that we need to find the answers to. Does the watt affect the shot string? Does shell length affect the shot string? What does mix shot types look like? What do mix sizes look like in slow-mo? What does blind side look like? Or black cloud? What effects do choke tubes make to the shot string? Does the shot string even matter? What are your questions about the shot string? And what more can we learn from the slow-mo footage? Ask your questions down in the comments. I really wanna know, because over the next several videos, we'll be using that slow-mo camera again to see some really cool stuff and answer more of the questions that we all have on our minds. As I'm drinking this celebratory Mountain Dew throwback, celebrating making history with this video, I wonder, what would it be like to shoot a full Mountain Dew can in super slow-mo? To see the rest of that video, you gotta watch my next one. Check it out right there. God bless you. I'm Joel Strickland, and I'll see you there.